Hey guys, I hope you're having a great weekend. I wanted to jump on for a few minutes and I was gonna do a live on my YouTube channel, but I figured I'd do this, it'd be a lot easier for me until I kind of figure things out with the YouTube channel and what I wanna do. <clears throat> and I'm starting to get a different setup here. So I'm trying to make things a little bit more um, professional looking, I guess you could say. I wanted to get on, um, I had watched a video earlier today and um, I was a bit concerned about what I was watching and the things I was hearing and wasn't really surprised by it, but um, I wanted to, and I've, I've seen other things too along the way that has to do with this. And if you have been reading my blog or listening to the podcast at any time, you probably heard at one point or another me talk about deliverance ministry. And um, I have had experience with deliverance ministry in the past as far as being on a team and traveling to other countries and being involved in that and um, for a number of years. So this is not something that I have not had uh, firsthand experience with or anything like that. But um, I noticed, and it's pretty obvious that as we go on in time, that if you're familiar with these types of belief systems, it's getting more and more prominent and you're seeing more people come out that are claiming to be deliverance ministers. And the main um, thing that they're saying is, is that they're casting demons out of indwelling Christians. Now there's no biblical basis for this that we can, that we can see. And um, it's concerning. And then you see some of the video footage that that's going around and some of the manifestations that are happening and people that are saying that they're born again Christians, but then you're seeing a lot of disturbing things go on and some teachings that are not biblically based. They're based on other people's books that, that have been out for decades, but there's new books that are coming out all the time, new curriculum to try to teach on deliverance ministry. And a lot of it's being just recycled and regurgitated. And it's, again, it's not based in scripture, even though books will contain scripture. When you actually go to look at what the scripture says in context, it's not matching up to what this book says. And unfortunately, what we see is that people will put their stamp of approval on a book in these types of movements, but they won't. And they'll say that they're okay because there's scripture in the book. But just because there's Bible verses mentioned in a book doesn't mean that it's got truth in it because someone could be taking the scripture completely out of context. So the video I watched today, there was actually, um, there's a group that you could pay to be a part of. It's a women's group and you pay monthly to be a part of this group. And it's a pretty big group. And um, long story short, the leader in this group has decided to formulate a deliverance team. And the deliverance team, I think was, uh, it hasn't been that long ago since it was formed, but this person is working on forming a deliverance team within this group that you have to pay to be part of. It's not a church. And the people are having to be the women. It's, it's a women's group. The women, are, women are have to, are having to be screened before they can be part of the group. Okay. The deliverance team. But there are stipulations that these members have to abide by and they have to go through the deliverance training and use a curriculum that the leader has picked out. And then one of the things that's listed on the requirements is that the team leaders have to go through deliverance, that the leader gets to conduct a deliverance uh, session over each team member to cast demons out of born again believers. Now, <laughs> there were some other things that were said. I just jotted some stuff down. Um, that um, there was a disclaimer that was given during this teaching or during this uh, session of where she's telling about the training that the people are going to be going through, that these women are going to be going through. And one of the disclaimers up front was there's going to be some women that are not going to want to go through with this and that some will have the enemy lie to them and that they basically... Um, will say that they want to get out of the class. And then it was concluded by saying something like that. Well, that's because they have demons and they don't want them cast out. And 
Some other things that were said too is that some people are not strong enough in their faith and don't want to see other people delivered if they don't want to participate in this and they don't want to go through their own deliverance. If you hear a, a cat bell in the background, our cats are up here. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, and if they're in rebellion, they won't do it. And if they love people um, enough that they'll that they'll abide by the requirements and they'll go through all the steps, they're going to be go, going through for an elder board. Again, this is not a church. So there, these women are going to be going before an elder board that's not even part of a church because it's part of a group for women that they're paying for every month to be part of. And that they're going to submit to, one of the things is submit and to go through deliverance before this elder group. And the leader said, if you love the Lord, you'll be okay with doing this. I mean, I'm sorry. I'm going to, I'm, I'm, this was so disturbing for me to hear this. And at the same time, it wasn't disturbing because of the affiliations that, um, are in this group and they're affiliated with people that I was affiliated with. So I'm not really surprised by the things that I'm hearing, but it's very concerning to me. And I battled on whether to say something or not. Um, and, the group is called core group. And I'll just leave it at that. I mean, people that are on here, they're going to, they'll, they'll know who it is, but it's called core group and it's for women. And I would, str I'm, I'm so concerned about these women that are part of this group. I can't even tell you. It was so grieving to sit and listen to that today and to hear what these women are being told. And it's manipulative. It is manipulative to say such things, to say, well, you know, if you question wanting to do this, uh, to go through deliverance training and you say, well, I just want to get out of it, then automatically you're demonized. You're, you're, you're labeled with a demon if you don't want to do this. And you say, hmm, something seems wrong here. Going through the curriculum, maybe something is off here. Well, then you have a demon. You know, that, that, and that's the automatic go-to in this. And it is so damaging and it's unbiblical to do this um i don't know how many times i have made it clear and when i've done podcasts and blog posts it's okay to test things in fact as a born again christian you are instructed and commanded in the word of god i am instructed you are instructed in the word of god to test all things to test all things to judge. I know that people say, judge not lest you be judged. That's not the whole scripture. And there are other passages of scripture that tell us, John 7, 24 says to judge with righteous judgment. We are to judge within the church. When people say they are born again Christians, we judge within the church. We, in order to, to test somebody's fruit, that requires judging and we are to do that. And it's a loving thing to do to say, this is not biblical conduct. This is out of order to say, I have an elder board, but we're not a church, but the elder board is going to conduct a um, an interview with you. And then you need to be willing to go through deliverance. Christian, you need to be willing to go through deliverance to cast demons out of you. And oh, by the way, we're going to do yearly fo or do follow ups with your state and regional leaders. And every year we're going to do a Zoom deliverance just to make sure that you don't have demons. I want to ask you a question. <clears throat> and I want you to consider this. If scripture is truly important in these deliverance ministries, then I want to ask a question here with this basis of this teaching going on. Did Jesus model this to his 12 disciples? Did Jesus tell his disciples that they had to go through deliverance ministry before they could do what he instructed them to do? Do we see this pattern or this model in scripture? Do we see scriptures that say that Christians can have indwelling demons? I'm not talking about living in this world and that you have the world, the flesh, and the devil to contend with, 
And there are outward things that can, the devil can tempt you outwardly. You can be influenced. There can be sin in your life. Let's face it. A lot of people want to blame the devil for a lot of things, but there's no accountability for sin. And sin does not equal a devil getting a foothold in your life. We must go back to what scripture says in the proper context. My fear, <clears throat> excuse me, my fear and concern for these women is that they're being manipulated and they're being told something that's not biblically based. They're not being properly biblically discipled. They may not even have ever heard the gospel. They're, they're hearing a miscon misconstruence of the gospel. I think I got that word right. The, the gospel is being misconstrued to them. It's being twisted and it's being warped into something that it's not. And this type of teaching, it does a lot of damage. And it just brings more bondage to people. And that's the, that's the fear and the concern I have for something like this. Um, you know... There was a comment made in this video that deliverance has been hidden. And I would just, <clears throat> I would caution that kind of statement being made. Because when we say something like that, or we say, well, you know, um, well, let's just stick with that statement. If someone says, well, deliverance has just been hidden. And so it's now coming to the forefront. Hidden where? If we believe that scripture is the word of God, then scripture is sufficient. Scripture is sufficient for us to understand and be trained in righteousness. It's sufficient, as 2 Timothy 3.16 says, to correct us, to reprove us, to rebuke us, to instruct us. If we say something like that and say, well, deliverance has been hidden. And so we've never operated in the churches have just been void of doing the things we're supposed to do. And I'm going to take my curriculum and share it with, with the church because they are really um, deficient in this because deliverance has been hidden. Then what you're saying, whether you realize it or not, is that the Bible is not sufficient enough for training, that it's not sufficient enough for instruction in learning how to be a godly person, in, in being a spirit-filled Christian. And I would urge you <clears throat> to, uh, to look up and do, a bit, and do a Bible study on what it means to be spirit-filled. What deliverance means. Because the, the vast majority of the time when that word deliverance is used in Scripture, it's not from demons. Deliverance mainly means salvation. And I would propose to you that we need to get back to the true gospel. We need to get back to the true gospel of Jesus Christ. And we need to get back to, I would encourage these deliverance ministers, stop talking to Christians, bo true born again Christians. Stop talking to Christians like they're unbelievers. That's, I mean, th this is, it's just so, it's just so sad to me. And so I wanted to get on and do a quick video and to address this and to talk about it. And some people are going to say, well, why don't you address this person privately? This is not a private issue. This is public teaching. Public teaching requires public address. And I've also, at the same time, there has been at least one incident that I have tried to address this person privately in another matter, and they won't talk to me. They won't, they won't respond back. So, <clears throat> excuse me, every time I go out and talk, I forget to bring my water on. Um, so, I just wanted to address this. I wanted to, to throw this out for consideration. And if there are any women that are part of this group, I'm strongly urging you to test what you're listening to. To get back to the Word of God. Get back to solid biblical teaching. Ask questions. If you're not allowed to ask questions, whether in a church, you're not allowed to ask questions in a group, it's automatically thrown up the apostle card, the prophet card, the leader card, whatever kind of card it is. If you're not allowed to ask questions 
And you're not allowed to say, well, this teaching that you did, Scripture seems to contradict this. Help me understand why the Scripture says this, but you're saying this. If you're not allowed to do that and you're immediately demonized, and let me just, and I'm just going to be blunt. This is manipulation. When you tell people, male or female, when you tell someone, well, if you don't want to go through with this, then you just don't really love God. And you also have demons. That's manipulation. That's not okay. You're automatically creating a, a way that people, you're automatically shutting the door to where people can't ask you questions. They can't voice concerns. And that's not healthy. That's not good leadership. That's not biblical leadership. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to say that. Again, sorry for the voice. Usually this happens late at night. So I've noticed... But um, <clears throat> anyway, I, um, I hope that this helps. And I just want to, again, urge these ladies, if you have concerns or there's immediate red flags are coming up, you need to pose these questions and consider getting out of this group. Anyway, I appreciate you guys. Thank you for your time. And um, I hope you guys have a blessed weekend.